Cool. Uh, morning, okay. everyone. Morning, everyone. Can we hear us okay? Is that? <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, my name is Scott. Uh, I'm a teacher. I teach maths at uh, school in Wolverhampton. Um, I'm Claudia. I work, I'm a civil engineer. I work for Southern Trend Water. Um, yeah, thanks for having us today to share a little bit about our uh, personal journey with God. So um, there's a few questions and then a bit like two of them to uh, which means um, more, yeah, more to us. So the first question I'm going to talk about is um, how did I come to um, know Jesus? So um, my first idea of church is when I was around 10 years old. It was um, a place near where I used to live in Hong Kong. And my mom brought us there. Um, um, it was it was really close. It's just literally, I think, a five minutes drive from where I live. And um, But I think at the time that the uh, idea of a church wasn't really clear to me. For me, I just feel like it's a place where people go to. And then um, uh, someone speak on the stage, which I think, um, yeah, it's what I can remember, what I feel at the time is not very interesting at the time. So I always feel like, oh, I'm always either daydreaming or like just run around with other kids and just play. So my day of church wasn't very clear or official to me. I think even though now look back at the time, even though I don't know what church really means to me, but I think God had already planted a seed um, in me. So um, um, that I know, like, oh, okay, church suppose, what's a church supposed to be like when I change to a different church when I'm with us? Um, when I went to that church, yeah, there's, all, I think all I remember is, um, yeah, they provided lunch, uh, which it, what I remember is, um, is quite nice, um, nice things that they do. And uh, from when I was young, I think what I remember from my, um, from my family is my parents used to, used to argue quite a bit. And I think that has, um, um, an impact on any children, I think. I think when I grow up, I'm feeling um, quite insecure. And then um, it's quite hard. I feel like, oh, I didn't have the, um, didn't have the, uh, the level of attention, as much attention from my parents. And, but I think um, when, when I move house to, uh, to change school and then we change church, I think that is time when um, the idea of church starts to grow in me. So where I've uh, met a lot of people that is... Um, similar age and in a similar situation. And then I think what they've taught me a lot in terms of um, um, how to like, like the compassion, um, affection and sharing, um, which I didn't get as much in, um, in the family. So, um, and then throughout the years, I think, because my mom to the church and it's my, me, me and my mom, that we um, attend church um, every week. And I think over the course of, I would say a, quite a long time, about, um, I would say a good eight to 10 years, and I've seen how um, the church experience, we're going to church change maybe uh, my mom. I think she changed her personality and how she um, had a relationship with my dad as well. I think that has affected me quite, quite deeply. They, they, didn't use, they don't argue as much anymore. So I think, like, oh, okay, this is the church really is some place that can really change you, even though it's not maybe not um, a quick or short span of time, but it's something that, um, will change you, your life for a long course. So I think through my mom, I've seen how uh, God can change someone and how it can impact a family or affect a family, um, um, uh, the, yeah, the whole family. So I think um, for the experience of mom and what I see in her, that her change, I think that um, when I was around 10 years since I went to my first church, I decided to get baptized because I feel like Oh, God really is the one that he will provide and he will give, um, he will really change, change lives. Um, I can see it in my mom and then I think it, it also, for the years, I can see his change in me as well. So, um, yes, this is how I come to know Jesus. Um, right. and, and so one of the questions we were asked us to do was to share a piece of uh, influential scripture in, uh, in our spiritual lives. And... I want to give some context before I share because I think it's it's critical to understand what was kind of going through my mindset when I came about this piece of scripture, and it actually links to my testimony too because it I would say this is kind of like the last element, if you like, that brought me to to Christ and in my decision to get baptized. So at, at the time I had moved to Birmingham, and I'd really been brought to church mainly because of Claudia. So Claudia had already been baptized 
And so I was following along. I was very open to, to learn um, and to, to hear. And so one of the things that I found particularly difficult, though, was my transition. So I really enjoyed my job from before. And although I switched to, to Birmingham uh, for, for Claudia, and I, you know, I, I love Claudia very, very much. Of course I do. Um, but then in my daily life of going to work, I, I really struggled at my new school. And I thought I really missed some elements of my old school. And I thought I, I'm, really, I'm finding it really difficult. So I thought one time, I think it might have been during one of our uh, life groups. Um, we had a life group with, with Jan before in um, Park Central. And I remember one of th this piece of scripture coming up and I found this really useful. So uh, I applied this to, to a prayer that I um, did just before uh, one of a particularly diff after a particularly difficult day at work. But the, the piece of scripture is Psalms 34, um, 4. And it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. And at the time, I, I thought, okay, I'm going to give this a go because I was really, really struggling at work. I really hated it. Every day was just, I, I loved going in. At some point, I just thought, uh, I'm just going to quit. And maybe I won't even do teaching anymore. And after I had prayed this prayer and just asked God to, to help me or to show me, you know, is this the right job for me? Then the next day I had, or the next few days, actually, I had some of the best days I've ever had at that school. And I thought, wow, oh, thanks, God. This is a very clear message. Thank you for, for letting me know. And I found that quite nice to hear and nice to see as well. And then I knew, okay, I'm going to stick this out. Uh, God's telling me to stay here. And after that point, I thought, oh, I can really rely. This is a God you can rely on. He, he, you ask him something and he will answer. Um, just as it said, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. So all the worries that I had were, were instantly gone. I thought that was great. And after that, that's, that's when I decided, okay, I'm going to take this seriously now. I'm going to get baptized. So that kind of, there's a, there's a scripture there as well for you, but also it links to sort of how, how I came to know uh, Christ too. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, with this scripture, I think it links um, um, quite close to um, the other questions I've picked, which is the, um, the God's teaching through the time of COVID. I think it's something that, um, yeah, any of us has never really experienced before. And it's a time that where um, we are quite uncertain about what might happen, um, about our jobs, about um, not seeing family and friends. I think it's a time that is, um, can affect a lot of mental health, on the mental health side of things, where we can used to meet up quite a bit, even for life group and work. But now we're pretty much dominantly only between yeah, ourselves and of course God. So um, the first point, I think what I've learned is um, it's definitely the, a lot more one-to-one -one time with God. Um, I found it a lot more distracting before, before the lockdown, because I've got so much to do, um, sports going out, go to town or, or anything. But now we've um, got more time uh, at home myself. Um, I've spent a lot more um, quiet time and then Bible study. And I think, um, um, yeah, with Scott going back at work, that I'm the only one here. I think at the start, I've, I struggle. It's like, oh, okay, because I quite like to talk sometimes. And when there's no one at home, it's oh, okay, like, who can I talk to? And then I've learned to try to talk to God, even though I may not hear the, the like, the instant response. But um, it is something that I think was my relationship with God. And um, and I think he will provide what he needs. I think at the start, we... I think everyone will probably have the fear of, oh, uh, what are they happening to their, to their job? Or uh, will, will people get furloughed? I think there's something that in my mind when it started, um, but God, he provided um, um, uh, for my workplace. Yeah, they say, oh, they, they're going to keep everyone. They're not going to follow everyone. I think that does give comfort in, um, in people like in our colleagues or people around me, I think. And then uh, it definitely take one of the fear elements away. So, um, um, that links to what Scott shared before the uh, the scripture that um, God will take away your fear and He will provide um, not always what we want but what we need. I think He always um, used the um, wherever we are, the environment or the situation we're in, to teach us a lesson. Um, I think that's definitely what I've um, I learned throughout. And then the um, the last point is the importance of having a life group. So. I'll bring, um, um, it's an alpha life group that we are in now. So um, our, we've joined, Scott and I, we've joined um, two alphas. The first one, we are the participant, but the second one, we, are, we, we, we try to help out. And, um, and then we see how the people who are there 
we are in the um, not we, we're not all the spiritual newborn babies, but we have different um, the different um, stage of people who are in the alpha to help out. And then it's the place that I think I've um, um, it's like reintroduce myself to God. And then although I've been in church uh, for the years, but um, I think it's always nice to have some like to set some new new blood or some new hope or some new idea about um, 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 that can draw me closer to God. And I think Alpha Life Group, they, they did that. So when we were quite lucky that when the first time, first one we joined, we were able to meet face to face and we had the, um, the one weekend away, uh, which is really nice. We go for like a, a really nice walk and we have like barbecue. And um, I remember the best thing is, is in the summer and that after our long, very hot walk, we have like ice cold Coke with lemon. I remember this is the, really, the best thing uh, at the time. But it's just the yeah, sharing um, with everyone there um, of a personal journey. And no matter whether how whether you know, G- know Jesus or not knowing Jesus, I think it's a place where we all feel very comfortable in met- meeting everyone and sharing. So it's definitely um, um, a worthwhile, worthwhile experience joining Alpha. And then it transits us into a live group, which now we move fully onto um, a virtual life group, which I think is, it, yes, it's really nice. It's, uh, we've got about seven of us. So it's a nice, yes, a nice group that we um, that we share each week, we do something slightly different. So um, with the um, the life group there, I think that made me realize more important because we can't go to a Sunday church where we can meet face to face and and catch up and talk to someone. But the life group makes it more important because it's a time where we can, um, pray for each other and then share the, uh, the spiritual journey and really um, for everyone to go through the ups and downs in everyone. So I think it definitely build a lot more of a deeper relationship with different brothers and sisters. So um, yeah, so I guess the, the main condition is the, uh, um, I have a more one-to-one alone time with God and then um, he will provide what we need. And then most important, I think is the important brothers and sisters that we're able to share with each other and, and grow together. And uh, I guess one of the last piece of advice as well that um, I was going to mention was in part of that life group, what we're doing recently is kind of engaging and keeping each other encouraged to do things like soap and spending time with God. And we've learned a lot of us before about what soap is, but I think it's definitely something worth doing. So uh, I don't know, I, if you haven't heard of soap before, I'll just quickly explain. S, you create the, the scripture, First of all, so you read a piece of Bible, and, and we were doing Bible study together, so we were all on the same page when it came to that. Uh, o we had was observe, where we try to analyze, A, what the scripture is saying to us personally in terms of what's going on in our life. Uh, a is ask, where we sort of que- just have a question in mind from what we've read, and finally prayer at the end. And I, I highly recommend spending sort of quiet time uh, engaging with that. And in the context of life group, I think it's, very very useful because then you kind of hold each other accountable for 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 ensuring that you've done it but you also can share and people can be be encouraged by that so uh, i highly recommend that as a tool for you to use in terms of your your um uh, alone time with with god um yes that's it back to you brett (laughs) 